hello gentle viewers i'm george from ireland here i am in london in front of uh, lord lugard's house so uh lord lugard is best known for having founded nigeria and being the first governor general of nigeria so you can see it's a large and handsome house he had here um, in rutland gate um, this area is the knightsbridge area of london which is um, super expensive too expensive even for me so keep those donations coming on paypal please Anyway, um, Frederick Lugard was born in, in Madras, India. It's now called Chennai. His father was an Anglican chaplain in the British Army. Um, and Lugard's parents um, uh, were British. They came from Yorkshire. Um, anyway, Lugard, he uh, later went to the Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst to um, train as an army officer. He'd been born in 1858. And um, sale of commissions into the British Army had just been abolished. Uh, because it hadn't done very well for the British Army in the Crimean War, 1853 to 56. So all army officers had to prove uh, their mettle and do this two years course, of course, at Santa. So it's now one year. So he's commissioned in 1878 into, into a Norfolk regiment. Though I don't think he had any connection with Norfolk. That's an English county um, about 80 miles north of London. Anyway, he was sent out to India. He fought in the Second Anglo-Afghan War, 1878 to 1880. Um, which was, um, it's arguable whether that was a draw or what. Um, and he fought in uh, one of the Burmese wars, and I can't think what else. Oh yes, in the Sudan campaign, um, 1885, um, ultimately unsuccessful attempt to relieve um, Chinese Gordon at Khartoum. So his uh, military career uh, was, was looking very bright. He'd been ear earmarked for high promotion. Unfortunately, he blotted his copybook because um, he became infatuated with a young divorcee. And a divorce was very rare and considered utterly scandalous back then. So he resigned his commission in order to pursue her to the United Kingdom, um, to propose to her, because letters could take weeks. He got there and she jilted him. So he'd thrown up his glittering career for this and hadn't even got the bride. So what next? Anyway, then he went to East Africa and he hired himself out to various um, chieftains who were fighting around Lake Tanganyika, Lake Malawi, the Karonga War. So he's doing this under his own auspices. Um, now, uh, tropical diseases were obviously very deadly to whites at the time. Quinine hadn't been um, invented, so that killed more British soldiers in these um, sunny climes than, uh, than enemies did. But anyway, he survived it. Um, and uh, this was before there was formal British colonization in the East Africa. That was to come just after that. Uh, Congress of Berlin and then um, setting up uh, uh, various colonies on the coast, obviously penetrating into, into the hinterland shortly thereafter. So it's a very rapid European expansion um, in Africa. Um, he served as governor of Hong Kong for a while. He uh, was the uh, instigator of the University of Hong Kong, uh, for which he's fondly remembered to this day. And later he was um, uh, dispatched to West Africa and what's now Nigeria. He um, uh, negotiated some treaties with uh, local rulers. So there was often indirect rule a, a uh, chieftain or a king or whatever you wish to call him would be allowed to rule his subjects still but he would accept British paramountcy which is to say he would only have foreign relations via the United Kingdom he would not receive a, a, a French ambassador he wouldn't send an ambassador to Japan or something he was only via the UK rely on the United Kingdom for defense he could have his own army but have to support the British army if it came to war things like that and then local rulers could carry on largely as before things that uh, the British found barbaric, such as human sacrifice or, or slavery, were to be abolished. Um, anyway, Nigeria was eventually two British protectorates, and Lugard's bright idea was, was to combine the, the two into one, which he eventually did in 1912. His, he married Flora Shaw, but they were not blessed with children, something which, which hurt them deeply, and obviously didn't look good in Nigeria, where certainly those days people believed in having plenty of children. Uh, anyhow, um, so his wife was the one who coined the word Nigeria, because the river Niger flows through it. It just means black in, uh, in Latin. Um, the trouble is that that, that, that soft G, it's pronounced the hard G, is a racial slur. Always, but um, in Latin, it doesn't simply mean the color black. I don't think you use it for a person's race, but it's also like meaning like scoundrel or villain or something. And so it leads to an awful lot of confusion and unfortunate mistakes, especially the country to the north of Nigeria is the French speaking country Niger. Okay, N-I-G-E-R, single G, pronounced a soft G. But uh, people see that and sometimes mispronounce it. 
with terrible consequences. Anyhow, um, so Lugar, he was against setting up a university in Nigeria, thought it wasn't suitable, he hadn't any uh, university education himself, he was deeply sceptical of what was taught there, he people would, would, thought people would have wrong-headed ideas, and he certainly believed in um, uh, having uh, local rulers hold sway over their people still, and, and that, that was better, not to try and completely Britannicize Nigerians, uh, nor to leave them utterly untouched. He really believed that the UK had a civilizing mission, was rather patronizing towards Nigerians. So he retired from that post in 1919, and then he retired back to the United Kingdom. His wife died considerably before him. Here, here he was living, the grand old man of colonial affairs. So he lived to the very great age of 87. So he'd been knighted much earlier for services to Nigeria. So Frederick Lugar obviously raised to the peerage. That's enough about Lord Lugard.